Leela is the badass beauty with an eye as big as her heart. In this video today, I'll be going through her entire life, from being abandoned as a baby, joining the Planet Express crew, and of course, her romance with Fry. Hi, I'm Lydia from Screen Portal, and this is the complete timeline of Leela. As Leela has such a long, complicated life, I've scoured the galaxy in the search for a future armor expert. And who better than YouTube's own Professor Farnsworth, Johnny Two Cellos. Johnny has created tons of excellent future armor videos on his channel, not to mention in depth Bojack Horseman timelines. So, without further ado, take it away, Johnny. Thanks, Lydia. Sorry I didn't get this to you sooner. I was busy ranking every Futurama episode ever, and I'm tired. <laughs> so let's begin at Leela's birth. Leela was born on July 29th, 2975, in the sewers of New New York, aka Old New York. Her parents, Morris and Munda, look like typical mutants, with Munda's tentacle hands and Morris's horizontal mouth. They were forced by the government to live under the city, and life there was far from great. So when they found out that their newborn daughter looked normal, aside from one eye, of course, they made the difficult decision to give up Leela in order to give her a better and brighter life under the sun. They left her by the door of the Cookieville Minimum Security Orphanarium in a small basket with a bracelet on her tiny hand and a note written by her mom. It took Leela years to reconnect with her family, but it turns out that her parents actually were by her side the entire time. They gave Leela gifts on her birthday and even tucked her in bed. So even if Leela felt alone in the world, her parents were always watching over her. Leela's childhood. Growing up alone in an orphanage is tough, but what made it even tougher was that she only had one big eye. Leela was often teased and bullied by her peers because of her monocle glasses and braces. Nice depth perception, one eye! <laughs> the poor mutant didn't have any friends in the orphanarium, but she was in love with one boy named Adelaide Atkins, another orphan who also laughed at her. During a reunion at the orphanarium, Adlai and Leela reconnected and started dating. Adlai apologized for his behavior and, in addition, became a successful surgeon. He offered Leela the chance to give her the second eye for her to become quote-unquote normal. After the surgery, they started dating and decided to adopt a baby. But when Adlai said that he would only accept a girl with an ear on her forehead if they did surgery to remove it, Leela finally understood that her looks are much less important than her soul. Now look, Adelaide, I'm proud to be different, and I just wish I'd realized that when I was her age. And she returned to her normal one-eyed beauty shortly afterwards. I guess there's nothing wrong with being a little weird. Leela, there's nothing wrong with anything. Due to growing up lonely and bullied, she learned to defend herself, ready to kick anyone's ass if necessary. Her toughness brought her to the master of martial arts, Fanog, which is a fun name to say. She was a natural ass kicker and the best in the class, but the sexist master Fnog didn't acknowledge her abilities and told her that to be the best, she needed to have the will of the warrior, which was apparently absent in females. But Leela is a warrior, and she absolutely destroyed Fnog in the ring when she was Bender's trainer in the Ultimate Robot Fighting League. I beat up someone who hurt my feelings in high school. Ha <laughs> ha! Year 3000 in the year 3000, Leela worked in applied cryogenics as a fate assignment officer, a job she was severely unhappy with. But her own fate would change forever when she came across a freshly defrosted 20th century delivery boy. What's with the eye? I'm an alien, all right? Let's drop the subject. Cool, an alien. When she attempted to implant a career chip into Fry, he scarpered away from the prospect of being a delivery boy again. She tracked him down, but Fry's rebellion against his fate inspired Leela to leave her job. Together, they visited Fry's long-distance nephew, Professor Farnsworth, and she became the captain of the delivery ship, Planet Express. Due to being an outcast, Leela has always been a very solitary being, but she would find companionship with a cute little creature called Nibbler. And how did they meet? Well, when the Planet Express crew are sent on a mission to collect animals from a planet due to explode, she came across an adorable puppy panda-like creature thing, which she affectionately named Nibbler. But Nibbler had an insatiable appetite, preying on the other rescued animals. It's not his fault that he's an unstoppable killing machine, is it, Snuggums? It was around this time she met another creature with, yet again, another insatiable appetite, and they were called Zabranigan. 
an egotistical military officer and an all-round creep. His attraction to her was instant and laid on his sleazy, sleazy charm. Welcome to my humble chamber, or as I call it, the love nasium. When his seductive methods failed, he tried another method of throwing himself a pity party. Now feeling sorry for him, she agreed to sleep with him, but she quickly regretted it the very next morning. Zap, last night was a mistake. A sexy mistake. No, just a regular mistake. And that was how her turbulent one-sided relationship with Zap began. At the end of the summer of the year 3000, the Planet Express team went on a cruise on the Titanic, an infamous doomed ship. Not only was the name a red flag, but the captain was too, as it was sailed by the incompetent Zap Brannigan. And to escape Zap's advances, Leela pretended to be in love with Fry. And this must have struck a chord, as when she realized Amy was doing the same thing to trick her parents, she got a bit jealous. The two shared a quiet moment, and it looked like they were finally about to kiss, until the ship got a bit too close to a black hole and spoiled the mood. Talk about a mood killer. Years 3001 to 3002. As an orphan, Leela grew up never meeting someone who looked like her, and so thought she was the only one of her kind. But that all seemingly changed when she met a stranger and Cyclops Alcazar, who invited her to their home world. He disclosed the tragic story of their people and explained they were the only surviving members of their species. She decided to marry Alcazar and so rebuild the entire Cyclops nation. But soon enough, she saw just how pathetic Alcazar was. We don't want to look like slobs in front of the other species, do we? No. So get to work on these dishes. But she was conflicted too, still wanting to give her species another chance. But luckily, before tying the knot for good, she realized Alcazar wasn't a cyclops after all, but a shape-shifting alien who only wanted to marry many, many alien women. So Leela dumped him and returned to her ordinary life without realizing that her true roots were far closer than she thought. Later on, Leela discovered a shocking truth. Her sweet nibbler was actually a member of a very intelligent race that appeared in the universe 17 years before the Big Bang. They told her that a mystic fleet of brains were going to invade the Earth and make everybody stupid or more stupid. So Leela returned to Earth with an important message to Fry, the only one who could stop the brain invaders. And so Fry was able to defeat the army of big brains, all thanks to Leela and Nibbler. In July of 3002, the Globetrotters challenged the Earthlings to a basketball game, and in order to beat them, Farnsworth used time particles to create atomic supermen in a lab. Well, they're still young. Mere atomic superboys, really. But in doing so, broke the universe's matter and time started skipping forward. Did everything just jump around? Or did my brain just stroke off there for a second? After one particular skip, Leela and Fry found that they had got married. But with no idea about how it could have happened, she got divorced, believing he must have tricked her into marriage. She never learned that to win her love, Fry moved the stars to proclaim his love to her, but she tragically destroyed the masterpiece before Fry could even show it to her. Years 3003 to 3004. Despite her lifelong belief that she was an alien, it came as a shock to learn that she was in fact a mutant. This reveal happened in the episode Leela's Homeworld. When Leela suspected two hooded figures of killing her parents, she tracked them down to the sewers. Who the hell are you? No one. And what's your language, young lady? Before confronting them, Fry stepped in and revealed the truth. I had the professor analyze the alienese letter that was found with you. After explaining that they gave her up so she could have a better life, she was overjoyed to finally meet her family. This is the happiest moment of my life! 
Although she grew up in an orphanage, she did get a second shot of reliving her teenage years with her parents in the episode Teenage Mutant Leela's Hurdles. Professor Farnsworth became just too old for the gang to handle, so the Planet Express crew decided to make him younger. Professor, we've talked it over and everybody thinks you're too old. Uh -huh. Right on. Yep. They brought him to the bubbling geezer to bathe in the age-reducing tar. But a series of unfortunate events caused by Bender covered the Planet Express crew in age-reducing tar too. Leela, now 14 again, decided to relive her youth, but with her parents in the sewers. This is my chance to spend time with my parents too! The family were very excited by this prospect, but also wanted to respect Leela's independence and freedom. But Leela wanted nothing more than to be treated like a true teenager, strict rules and all. Fine, sweetiekins will be the strictest parents ever. Now, let's all have some tequila to celebrate! During her stay, Leela went for an awkward yet cute date with Fry, cementing all of our views that these two belong together. <laughs> Later on, the professor found that the process was reversible, but Leela decided to stay and grow up all over again. All I ever wanted was to grow up here, with you. Unfortunately, the professor's plan went terribly wrong and Leela was forced to jump into the fountain of aging to become a grown-up again, sacrificing her childhood and life with her parents in order to save her friends. I guess every adult wants to be a kid again sometimes, but I worked hard to be the person I am. The fabulous person! Leela always wanted a family, and she did kind of get it when she accidentally impregnated Kif. Due to the Kif's special anatomy, he can exchange genetic material with another person in times of distress just by touching their skin. So Kif gave birth to the babies, and some of them even had Leela's one eye. There goes my DNA. What a disgusting and beautiful process. At the end of the show's original run, in The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, Fry made another attempt to win Leela's heart by exchanging his hands for robot devils. This was to impress Leela with his holophonic opera all about her. Of course, Robot Devil tricked Fry and almost got Leela all to himself, but in the end, Fry gave up his new skill turns for Leela to be free. Impressed by Fry's deed, Leela asked him to continue his opera. At the end of the episode, we're left satisfied by the feeling that these two may end up together after all. Years 3004 to 3009. After Fry performed his opera, bad news arrived. The Planet Express had lost its license, and our heroes were jobless for two years. We were cancelled? Oh, it's terrible, just terrible! When the license was finally renewed, the team threw a party, and during this celebration, Hermes accidentally got his head sliced off. While at the head museum, Leela met a mysterious but charming guy named Lars Fillmore. I'm Leela. Nice to meet you. Nice to be met. Oh. <laughs> he was mature and treated Leela with great respect. They immediately fed in love, and after a very short courtship, they decided to get married. You're the woman I've been waiting for all my life. During the wedding, Hermes' head got cut off, but everybody relaxed when the professor explained that all time paradox duplicates would eventually die. As a duplicate himself, Lars knew that his fate was doomed, so he cancelled the wedding and naturally Leela was devastated. She continued living her life and became a leader of the Earth fleet against the naked scammers who had taken over the planet. At a New Year's party, Fry brought Lars back to Leela to reconcile. Even though they'd broken up a long time ago, she still missed him very much. And at that moment, Nuda, the leader of the alien nudist scammers, tried to kill Fry and Leela. Lars sacrifices himself to save the couple, and Leela saw the time code on Lars's butt. She then understood that Lars was actually Fry's duplicate, and at Lars's funeral, we witness a touching moment between Fry and Leela. He was a good man, Leela. Yeah, you were. 
In the summer of 2009, Leela joined Feministas to protest against the demolition of 12% of the Milky Way, just to let Leo Wang expand his golf club. Leela encouraged her friends and the other Feministas to protect the environment and they gained an incredible amount of power. After breaking out of prison and now a fugitive, her and her Planet Express crew jump into a wormhole to escape and during the last moments of their lives, Leela finally confessed her love for Fry. Maybe I waited too long to say this, but I love you too. They then entered a wormhole and didn't know where they would end up. Year 3010 and 3012 after flying through the wormhole, the Planet Express ship crashed into Earth and the professor managed to save everyone except for Fry, who used his body to protect Leela's right before the crash. Oh, that's, that's pretty cute, isn't it? Unable to live without him, Leela built a Robo Fry, but due to a technical fault, he exploded and killed Leela. Crushed and very, very sad, Robo Fry built a Robo Leela. When both the human versions of Leela and Fry were able to be resurrected, their robot counterparts left together to start their own life. We'll be back for our stuff. In September, the Planet Express made their 100th delivery to a wealthy elite called Mrs. Astor. And while attending one of her parties, Fry accidentally revealed that Leela was a mutant. But if anyone asks, say she's an alien. As a result, she was now banished to the sewers due to the Earth's law. Sick of her kind being treated as second-class citizens, she started a rebellion and fought for the right for mutants to visit and live on the surface. She won the cause and her parents could finally live freely together. In the late summer of 3012, Leela found herself in a horrible, devastating situation. Her mom had started dating Zap Brannigan. Oh, sex with Zap! Oh, sex yeah. with ah. Zap! Sex no. with no. Zap! Leela was naturally angry, but it was Fry who stepped up and convinced Leela to support her mother's decisions. Maybe Zap isn't the only one who's marriage material. You're getting there. But to everyone's relief, Munda called off the wedding after finding out that Zap was planning to trick a shark-like alien species into war. And later on, her and Leela's father got back together again. May I kiss the bride? <gasps> Congratulations. 3013, Meanwhile. This is the most romantic ending of any animated series ever it still gives me chills. I've dived deep into this episode in both Fry and Farnsworth's timeline, so I won't bore you with all the details again. But basically, Leela and Fry were deeply in love with each other and going strong. Fry planned on proposing to her, but due to Farnsworth's time travel contraption, the entire universe became frozen, all except for her and Fry. With the world now all to themselves, the two get married and travel the Earth together. And even after spending decades with just each other, they were still deeply in love. Suddenly, a spot of light they saw a couple of times before appeared in front of Leela and Fry, and it turned out to be the Professor, who had been searching them for all of this time. He fixed the device and asked them if they wanted to come back with him and live their lives together all over again. And so that completes the timeline of Leela. Please let me know your favourite Leela moments and which character you'd like to see the timeline of next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.